Hey guys, welcome back. It's good to be back after a while. I have a little bit of a flute, so you forgive if my voice sounds a little bit weird. But we continue with our project. So I have um, my ZAMP running here, Apache and MySQL, so you should do that as well. Start those processes. And then we are going to log in. So log into your system. And there we go. All right, so we continue here. Now, if you look at where we ended, uh, each post here has uh, has this placeholder image for the profile where there's supposed to be a profile image. So we have to rectify that just now so that uh, we do a bit of a cleanup. The same way it's actually showing who's logged in over there. So we could copy from the header because this is the header, what we did right here. We could do exactly the same thing right here okay now if you remember correctly what contains this post right here is simply a file if i go to my book it's the file called post.php the one not inside the classes but outside so fire up your notepad uh, sublime text or notepad plus plus and by the way, in uh, preferences, you can change the color scheme to something that you prefer. But I think the black looks pretty cool. We look more like programmers with this one. All right. So in post.php, this is the part that gets us the image that we, uh, we end up displaying here, which is oh uh, just a second yes this is the user image where we choose whether it's a male or female to show and we end up showing it there so we are only checking for the gender of the user but what we could do is actually check to see if the user has a profile image so that we can display that instead i think we did exactly that in uh, the uh, header so if we open up our header there we go so we check that and then we actually get a thumbnail version of this image right here using the image class now in this post section if you notice down here we have image class already defined so which means we can probably use it because we have it defined from the profile.php uh, itself because this is simply included uh, the post.php is simply included inside the profile page all right so since uh, the image class is already defined there we can simply use it here okay so let's do exactly that so we'll copy this line right here from our header if you don't remember where that line is you can simply type it again and then we're going to duplicate this part because we're going to use an if statement as well. So I'm going to use control shift D like so. Let me enlarge things a little bit more. So here we're going to be checking for the uh, profile image. Okay, now let's go to our uh, local host and let's go right into PHP my admin. There we go. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is we're going to check in the database to see what the column is because there will be times when you are programming and you forget what the column names are. So let's see what's actually contained over there and why is it taking so long to open. This is a local host. All right, so let's go to MyBookDB. That's our database or whatever you named your database. And let's go to Users Table and then inside there we're going to see that we have a column called profile image and the other one is cover image now if you look closely here when the user hasn't yet selected a profile image we have an empty uh, column so the column is empty no data and then we have this one which has a profile image where there's actually some data now there's a third option where there could be data 
but the file was somehow deleted uh, one way or another, maybe through some, a different process, but the data remains. So we have to account for all three uh, possibilities. One is that the column is empty, two is that the column has data and the file exists, or three, that the, it has data but the file does not exist. So now instead of checking for all three, what we can simply do is check if whatever data we get here, whether it's empty or there's actually some text in there, we simply check if whatever file is being presented actually exists. That way we only need to check for one thing instead of checking for all those three uh, possibilities. So let's profile image column. So we're going to go down here and say profile image because that's the one we want to deal with okay forget that there so we're we're saying if we we don't want to check for that so let's let me remove that what we want to check for instead is if the file exists so we're going to say if file exists like so and then inside the brackets we're going to put this raw profile image okay make sure you put to uh, brackets at the end okay so if the file exists regardless what data is in there then we're going to utilize that so let me paste what we had copied here and we are trying to replace this variable image so I'm going to put that variable here so image is going to be image class we're going to get the thumbnail version of this okay so let me copy that and put it there and that's it so it's important that we check for this first and then we check if the user actually has a profile image that is useful and then we replace the variable image with whatever that is okay so that should sort out the problem so let me go back to my browser and then let's refresh and right there we go we see uh, we have our profile image now in case your profile image isn't round like this it's squared instead uh, I think I was tinkering previously before this tutorial so what I actually added is this part here border radius of 50% so if I mess that up a little bit you're going to see that probably this is what yours looks like a square image so if you want to leave it like that that's fine or you can add the border radius of 50% and then it's going to look like a circle like that. All right, so that's uh, one thing down. And one more thing to do here is if I go to, I happen to click on timeline, uh, you see that I get uh, this error. Now errors are awesome, like I always say, because they give us a chance to actually solve a problem. So it says fatal error, which means it failed to continue because class image was not found okay now where was this it's in the header.php online 7 so let's go and check header.php online 7 right there uh where is this so this is line 7 and it's unable to locate this class now remember the header is always active regardless the page you're on so if we didn't have our our error on this page the header is here this is the profile.php page but when you go to the index.php page we have this error it means the problem is actually in the index.php page so let's look at what's different with the php uh the index page versus the profile page so let's open both so this is the profile page and then this is our index page now I think you noticed something there as these were changing because on the profile page we have included this class whereas in the index.php we haven't included that class. So we simply copy that class into this index.php as well and that is supposed to solve that problem. And there we go. Now the issue here, I think you've noticed an issue here is that we're going to be adding a lot of classes over the course uh, of our building our website and it means we have to copy all those classes into every page that we need to use them so for example 
I have this list here and I have the same exact list in the profile.php page. Now in programming, every time you're repeating uh, information or data or your code, then you're doing something wrong. So you should never have to repeat your code. There's always a better way to do it. So in this case, the problem with repeating code is that let's say, for example, I add a new class. Uh, let's say I have 30 pages where I copied this exact same thing. And as my website grew, I got to, let's say, 30 pages. And then I add one more class. It means I have to go through all those 30 pages to update and include that class. Now, that can be a pain. So there's always a better way to do it. How we'll do that is let's create a new file. Let's add our PHP tags there. Now we're going to use this file as the loader that's going to load all our classes. So I'm going to copy everything here because this is the full stack. And then I'm going to paste it in here. Okay. And then I'm going to save this file in my classes folder. I'm going to call it autoload dot php you can call it anything you want of course so there we go now instead of including all these here i simply have to include the autoload file because that file includes everything i need okay so there we go so i can simply delete everything here and say autoload dot php copy that into the profile.php page as well, like so. Okay, which is awesome. Now we're going to refresh to make sure that we haven't broken anything and that's about right. So let me go back to the profile page and that still works. Okay, now that's a better way because now every time we add a new class, we simply go to the autoload.php page and add it here and then it's going to be added to the rest of our website. And now if you notice session.start, this session start here is also repeated everywhere. So we can simply cut that out from our profile.php page and add it to the auto load. Now session start should always be at the top. That's much better. And so I can save this and then I can remove it here since the session has already been started once we added that. Otherwise, we might have an error or something. Okay, so that's a bit of a cleanup right there. And we are looking good. Okay, so that was a, a quick uh, cleanup of things here. And we're going to go to the next video where we see how to click on one of these because right now I can't click on this user to view their profile. I can only see my profile. So we're going to see how we can view somebody else's profile by clicking on it. All right, so I'm going to see you in the next video.